Good evening, dear participants. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. And um, this is our fourth Katudel online seminar series. And uh, our guest is from Kafkas University, Dr. Selçuk Şentuk, who is going to share with us uh, his dearest opinions. And he's, uh, he's going to give us a speech titled with Unlearning Language in Context, Culture and Literature. But before him, let us listen to our head of department, Dr. Naji Kayoğlu. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be to me for me to be with you, and uh, oh, thank you very much for choosing uh, to be with us. Uh, you may feel uh, tired at the end of this the first day of the week. Uh, I hope and this session uh, will do our best and also uh, will make this session uh, worth uh, for you. Uh, allow me to uh, introduce. Uh, Associate Assistant uh, Professor Dr. Selçuk Şentürk. And Dr. Şentürk holds MA in Postcolonial Literary and Cultural Studies from University of Leeds, and also PhD from uh, University of Leicester in English Literature, uh, 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And Dr. Şentürk was selected to represent University of Leicester in a project called He, She, He for She, uh, against gender-based violence on campus. His ideas about how to prevent violence on campus have been present, represented to the United Nations by University of Leicester for further development. His research uh, interests include a gender, race, post-colonial, eco-feminist, uh, Kurtism, Sufi uh, mysticism, and Marxist, Marxist theory. And he's particularly interested in the construction of non-normative and non-biological uh, families in those lessons fiction. And Dr. Selchuk uh, is the author of the book uh, called Kinship Reimagined Family in Doris Lessing Fiction, and which was published last year, right? Uh, Selchuk Oja. Uh, indeed, this year, just this year. This year, okay. Again, congratulations on your success. I hope we will continue having and uh, producing more valuable work uh, for Turkey. A few words uh, I feel to make with you. Some of you might be wondering why we have an invited someone like Dr. Selce, whose educational academic background is not very much related to language teaching. Uh, or his background does not match with ELT, uh, we have pretty good reasons, uh, let me say. And number one, so far we have discussed the issue of language teaching or issues related to language teaching and uh, learning, but so far we haven't articulated the word unlearning, which I believe might be quite new for many of us and some of our audience may not have heard this before. Some of you may be familiar, but uh, this concept is somehow quite in, uh, new for us. So this is the top, one of the topics uh, Dr. Selçuk uh, will be touching uh, in this presentation. And secondly, it's, it's always good to have a different perspective, to have someone from relatively a different uh, discipline. So Selçuk uh, Kujam, I believe will bring a different look, a different perspective, a, a different eye to what we have been doing for years. And because things may have become routinized in our practice. So sometimes we take many things for granted without questioning them, but uh, we never know for sure whether it works or how it works. Uh, it's quite customary for a teacher to enter the class with a text in his hand proposed and suggested, imposed by Mr. Blah, blah, blah, and to follow the course book. And uh, without questioning exactly the value of the, of the course book, but we were having discussion with uh, Kujam some months ago and we realized that, I mean, uh, some of the language uh, which we teach, which we have been teaching, does not exist in real life. 
So th this is the this is the story that and and, and, and, and we started with Asad Koja. So the language we teach, the language uh, sometimes uh, we use or we ask them to learn exists only in textbooks. So uh, Asad Koja has different perspectives, different ideas and experience, and he brings the his background of. The, the, the connection, the culture, literature, and also the language. So I ask Sachi Kojan, why not share this very valuable and experience, not only as a teacher, but as someone who was exposed to English, Engle, English in England for years. And he kindly agreed to be with us and to share his own personal observation and also experience, uh, both as a teacher as someone uh, who was exposed, who happened to live, who lived uh, in the uh, UK and, and for a long time. So uh, yes, without uh, wasting much of your time, uh, <coughs> Hocam. Uh, evet Hocam, mikrofonlar sizde. Okay, thank you Hocam. Do you hear me right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. So I thank you all. Uh, especially the organizer and you, Naji Hocam. And I'm quite delighted to be part of this seminar series because I'm just an emerging scholar, but I would like to be the idea of emerging. So that is the story. So uh, I also thank the uh, distinguished professor uh, here today from diverse universities. And uh, so uh, I just would like to start my presentation with a basic question. Are we really happy with the ways in which we learn and teach grammar? So having this question in mind, I would like to address some issues and some novel approaches by which we can reformulate our learning. I mean, specifically language learning and grammar learning. So I'm not an expert on EFL, but as you said, Naji Hocam, I value the interdisciplinary nature of the sciences. So uh, also I'm not here to teach anything, but I'm here to learn in a mutual way. I mean, I'm more than happy to hear your contributions. I mean, criticism in relation to my method that I'm just trying to develop at Kafka University. So uh, as a final thing, as you just suggested, the presentation does not relate to young learners, but I believe it could potentially give an idea. I mean, how to engage with uh, language teaching uh, by and through literature. So again, thank you very much. and. So uh, it is really be, it's really an honor to be here today. Okay, let's get started. So my topic, as you can see on the screen, I'm learning language in context, culture and literature. So uh, we will focus on the term unlearning soon a bit, but now I just would like to introduce you uh, the flow of presentation. So uh, first we will focus on outcomes and I'll just mention briefly the terminology and we will look at the terms like unlearning, culture, literature. And uh, in the second half of the lecture, we will do some practice. And I'll share uh, some of my students' feedback in relation to my method, uh, if I can say. And I would like to end the day, I mean the lecture, with your contributions. Okay. So let's talk about outcomes. So at the end of the day, I aim to give you an idea or share my idea uh, as a kind of interdisciplinary aspect between literature, linguistics, and EFL. So first aspect, first outcome will be focusing on culture and literature can create novel ways of engaging with grammar. Literature can contribute to a nonlinear learning. We will come to this one later on and teaching model. Students of letters, I mean, in, in our departments and in your departments can nicely engage with speaking, reading, vocabulary skills in a grammar class. So this is the key thing that I'm trying to focus on today. So another outcome will be practicing grammar in context, which is literature in our case, can earn students critical thinking skills in a stress-free learning atmosphere. So that is the idea. So we are universities. So we have to equip our students with critical and analytical thinking skills. And I believe the power of the literature to transform our students' lives into the better in terms of learning. And also, uh, 
Uh, we will look at students' feedback, uh, grammar class of 2019 and 20. So I just asked them if you could share your opinions uh, of our grammar class of the last year. So there are some positive things and I'll share some negative things. So uh, we will find the middle way. Okay, so uh, if we're gonna look at the title, one part of the lecture will be based on the culture and the other one will be based on the literature. And the culture section, uh, the culture one, uh, includes my observation of about six years in the United Kingdom. So we will move from culture to the action. And the second part relates to my experience of teaching at Kafka University by using literature and teaching grammar. So uh, language and context, I mean the language used by native and non-native speakers in the UK. So the culture and language shocks, they relate to my experience when I just recognize that the things are not really going well in terms of my language. So shocks, as you can imagine. So linear learning, I mean, basically it is the, uh, it is the way that we follow in Turkey uh, in terms of grammar. So you just learn things in order uh, in a strict and non-flexible way. So we will look at this one as well. So I'll come to the idea of unlearning as a separate phase, uh, but just have it here at the moment. So this is the first part. And when we come to the second part, uh, I will basically focus on the holy book. You will see it uh, soon. So the holy book is understanding and using English grammar. So I just chose to problematize. And problematizing is really good word, an academic word that we use uh, as a kind of identifying problem not only identifying, but also bringing some solution. So I problematize grammar learning and teaching uh, in, at Kafka University with the holy book. And also, uh, I just uh, would like to change a little bit uh, the nature of the things I would say, engaging with grammar rather than teaching or learning grammar. Because the word teaching, as, as, a, as a man of letters, I can say, looks a bit problematic, it includes some hierarchy relations. So we will focus on nonlinear learning, just opposite the linear learning, and we will look at the uh, questions, the natural approach, and we will end the day by Lolly Londoners, uh, the book we have here, by doing some practice. Uh, okay, so let's keep going on. So on learning language, uh, if I can just share some quotes with you, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So that is the basic philosophy. Unlearning means disregarding something that you take for granted, that you take for to be true, uh, like in the case of grammar. We learn lots of structures, we learn lots of rules, so we take them to be granted. But when we are outside the Turkey, we unlearn. So we see that the things are not really in this way. So they have some, their own subject specific rules in a given context, like literature and culture. So this is the idea. So one of the easiest way to unlearn something as suggested in here is to move away from the location where you learned it. New surroundings can help you notice new things. You are basically tricking your brain into unlearning by engaging in a new surrounding, so you can unlearn one idea and learn another. It is another subtle way of helping you uh, break a habit. So that is exactly what happened to me. I changed my location in 2012 and I followed the way of unlearning. So that is quite a dominant subject in literature as well, unlearning, the idea of unlearning. Okay, now let's focus on the first part of the presentation. So. Uh, if I can just ask you in a silent way, would you, would you just tell me what is going on in here? So this is the very first days that I landed in the United Kingdom and I have seen the sign to let and I thought it is a kind of toilet because for me to let is something that I have seen in grammar books to let somebody do something. And I didn't recognize uh, that it was not a, it was a toilet. So I thought it's a toilet. So that could be a bit funny, but that was how it is. So you, ser you see that how uh, guided, how directed uh, I was at that time, that I have seen a sign uh, meaning a toilet, but it wasn't. Okay, so we start at the first part, which is culture in the UK. And then another example, if I'm going to give, 
So again, one of the very first months that I just uh, just jumped into a train. So and a, there was an announcement. It will say the train terminates here. So all of a sudden, I thought it's something negative. The train will be broken down. And I thought something is wrong. But also, uh, you understand that it won't terminate. But you see that the, the word you terminate can have a different meaning, although you learn it to be negative. So that is a point that I started unlearning. OK. So uh, let's have a look at uh, another example. I'm just giving you the cultural examples. Ingilterra'de 50 pound'u bozdurmak. Okay, that's the challenge uh, I happened to encounter, and it was really difficult because uh, uh, from the Bank of Turkey, I was given lots of 50 pounds, thinking that I shouldn't uh, be burdened by the lots of money. So just all 50 pounds, and I just landed in, in the United Kingdom, and I have realized uh, they're not taking my money. I didn't know what was the reason, and I thought a Turkish way of doing things, and I thought I have to just exchange this money. So these are the very first months again, and I tried to exchange my money. So the first time I asked the question, okay, the first one, the first try. I am wondering if you could give me some notes in return for 50 pounds. And I look weird, so they didn't understand what I'm suggesting. So in return for 50 pounds, I was like selling my money. So they couldn't get it anyway. Second try, a little bit softer. Hi there, how about exchanging my money with your smaller notes or coins, please? Again, they couldn't get it. Third, fourth, fifth, all in vain. So then I just received a warning from a British friend. He said, like, we don't have 50 pounds, 50 pounds notes in here that much. And the idea of money exchange in the shops might not work that well. So better to buy something, but another chocolate, of course, on its own. So, sorry. So they, these were the things that you think your grammar will work. You think your language will work really nicely as, as a graduate of English language literature. But you, you realize that they're not working. There is something not wrong maybe, but there is something that you need to focus and amend. So it was really funny. And I just popped into an Indian shop at an, another day. And I said, Salam Aleykum brother, make this 55 for our tenor. Jazak Hyrulat. So this is a kind of traditional thank you. And the problem sort of that. And the example I'm trying to give you here, I'm using the same language, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work in the case of British people. And it works in the case of uh, Indian or Pakistani people, because we have some sort of uh, close connection with them. So it worked. So if we're going to talk about Paul Grice's maxims of the conversation, we can see I violated two rules of these maxims. So I wasn't relevant at that time because the idea of exchanging money and even 50 pounds, which is like, which is always thought to be fake because they don't have it, uh, didn't work. And the another one, I wasn't clear. I was not using a clear English. And that was the another issue. So they couldn't get me. Uh, so that's it. Okay. So the signs, these are quite these were quite troubling me at that time. And in my second year, I owned a car and I was really happy, but the problem was the signs. You know, I could understand what is written here, Monday to Friday, no loading, Monday to Friday, pay admission, display ticket, maximum stay two hours. The moment I have seen these signs and I thought the parking looks like forbidden for the non-native. So I couldn't make sense of it. So again, you see the, you know the language, but the culture pays, plays a great important in conveying the meaning because culture is a kind of language, is a kind of sign that carries the culture. So I was unlearning the language that my grammar or my language was not working really well. Okay, uh, Nadja Jam, are we going too fast by the way, just to make sure, uh, or is it just, uh, is it just okay? Uh, it, it, it goes perfectly well. Please go ahead. I enjoy it very much. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. So, uh, signs were traveling as well. Uh, so, another thing uh, in Turkey, we are always thought that if you use which, could, can, might, etc., you will be on the safe side. You will sound polite. But I also have seen that that's not the case. And I have uh, seen 
there are magic words that we are supposed to use uh, when it comes to uh, when we involve in a conversation with British people. These are please, thank you, and sorry. So these are the magic words. Because world cult, these words, you know, we have been thought in grammar, do not always necessarily sound polite unless accompanied by the magic words. For example, look at this one. Uh, so there is a big difference between these two sentences. Can I have two tickets? Okay, question mark. Versus two tickets, please. So the one on the right hand side is much more polite when it comes to the culture, cultural context. Because in this one, you don't use police. Even you can witness a British people when they just go to a shop with their uh, children and the children don't say thank you or please. They say, what do we say? Okay, what do we say? And the kids, they say thank you or please. So these are the magic words. And another thing uh, that I learned quite late, anyway, if they ask me, what have you learned in English in England uh, for about six years, or what have you got off there? I will say PhD and sorry. So two things. Sorry is something amazing. Uh, I hope one day we can have it in our country because the problem is when British people say you sorry, so that means there is no further uh, involvement, any, any, any further step beyond, because sorry is a kind of complete sentence that does not require any further explanation. So let's think about our case. So uh, when a friend of asks us something like an invitation, örneğin arkadaşlar, uh, arkadaşınız sizi düğününe davet etti, uh, çok gitmek istiyorsunuz ama bir nedenden dolayı gidemek, gidemediniz. Bu durumda ne diyorsunuz? Ya gelecektim aslında ya şöyle işler çıktı, böyle işler çıktı. Nasıl olur da kaçırırım? Valla kusura bakma billa gelecektim. Ne yapıyorsunuz arkadaşlar? Hep bir e, bir gerekçe, bir excuse sunuyorsunuz. Bir açıklama yapmak zorunda kalıyorsunuz. Soruya geldiği zaman çok rahatlatan bir ifade. Bir İngiliz sorry dediği an arkadaşlar olay burada bitmiştir. Bir daha örneğin sizin düğünüze katılamadı. Sorry I couldn't make it. She does not need to give any further explanation. So that is what I learned. Because uh, in the first month, I was insisting my supervisor, my friends, even, even when they say sorry. So, so that was the thing I unlearned or learned or relearned. Okay. So another thing that I had a chance to observe the culture was academia. So now it is a completely different story. You're coming from a different background. So you had lots of classes. But in the United Kingdom, you don't have that much classes. And from the first month onwards, they expect you to write your dissertation, but you don't know what to do. So that was quite troublesome in, in about six to seven months, the initial months. And then uh, I was all the time in trouble, uh, not with the language, but with the culture, academic culture in the UK. So I would like to share some of the uh, emailings between myself and my supervisor. And I aim to show you that the language we see is not the language we think it to be. And this is me exactly while doing PhD. I think Nigel uh, should be familiar with this photo as well uh, of his own image uh, long years ago, uh, a rainy country but raining on you always all the time. So this is the emailing between me and my supervisor. So it is something special, but I just would like to share it with you. And the first email, one of the very first emails. So she writes to me, overall, overall, there is a good, a lot of material here. And I can see that this chapter will, with more work, reach the standard required for a pass. So believe me, the moment I have seen this email, I saw this email, I was in the sky. I was very happy Then I thought I passed my first year, but the problem was, uh, the problem happened after a British friend of mine saw it. She said, you're in trouble. And I said, how in trouble? So she explained to me, overall, overall means it is not that good. It is not that good, but overall it looks good. Okay. So there is a lot of good material. So that means the material stays there. You didn't do anything. So the material is good. Your citations are good, but you didn't do something. And I can see this chapter, okay, comma, bit more work. That means you didn't work enough. No, it's just the language. We know it. We, we, we, know, we know English. What does it mean? But it doesn't mean the same thing in terms of culture. 
So the final bits was shocking, reach the standard required for a pass. So it says could reach, the word reach means like you have still way to go for, and the standard, you know, it is not that good. It could only meet the standard for a pass. So I was shocked. And in the second email, just two days later, she wrote to me, be positive. You have quite a lot of work to do in a short time. And I was quite depressed. You know, it is quite troublesome. And I asked a British friend of mine, what does it say here? What does uh, it say here? She said, you are really in trouble. Then I just asked her, my supervisor, to have a, let's say, meeting, you know, uh, meeting as soon as possible because I was quite panicky. And she said, and her response was, would you like to meet before I go or do you prefer to press on writing? She basically, she was basically suggesting that I don't want to see you, just sit and write. So you see how the language is different. Uh, it's not, uh, I mean, the culture plays a great role in understanding the language. Okay, so that was a bit shocking and I just finished the chapter. So this was from 2017 and I was happy that I finished the chapter, but she said, I'm very impressed, blah, blah, blah. Much of this essay will be very useful for the introduction to your thesis. She said, I don't see, I mean, basically, I'm just unopening it for, I'm unpacking it for you. I don't see this uh, chapter was that good for its uh, own sake, but it could be used in introduction. So that means I was in trouble again. So this is the language that we used, uh, uh, that I, unlearned that my grammar, my language uh, was not really working well, but I was just trying to unlearn the things uh, weren't as I thought them to be. Okay, so now we came to the second section. You know, we talk about culture with some distinctive examples in a quicker way. We came to the second part, literature. And in 2019, September, and I came back to, uh, to my home university, Kafka's, and I just, because I was in the middle of the term, I couldn't have any literary lectures, literary classes, and I was suggested I teach grammar. And I said, I don't want to teach grammar. They said, you have been to England, okay? So it is you who should teach this one. And I trust you, you need to teach it. And I said, please, I don't want to teach. And anyway, I was given a baby for a nappy change. So I was given a baby for a nappy change which was grammar in this case. So, and this is a kind of tradition, you know that. Uh, so you ask the, the previous teacher or lecturer uh, what kind of materials they use. And, and I have seen, I have observed this time in Turkey, they have been using understanding and using English grammar for a long time. And okay, I said, I can use that one as well, why not? So the first week, the second week and the third week, the students were doing really well. I mean, they were happy, they were doldering and boshalting, fill in the blanks, and they were choosing the multiple tasks. Uh, I mean, they were doing excellent. Well, when I asked them to write something, uh, I mean, to produce their grammar, it was horrible, it was horrible. And at that moment, I unlearned another thing. So that book was not working at all. It is understanding the grammar, but we couldn't understand and we couldn't use it at all. So then I called it the holy book because it is sacred in this department, you cannot say anything against it. So, uh, and I just try, and I just decided to change my method at that time. So my method then I believe should be something of literature because I power, I believe the power of literature in transforming anything that is, that is concerning the human. Okay, so now we are just shifting our focus into the action side. So uh, Krushen, most of you are familiar with his theory of natural approach. He suggests language acquisition does not require extensive use of conscious grammatical rules and does not require tedious serial. So that was the thing uh, my students were doing with English grammar book, the holy book. And I just thought the idea. So how about literature as a comprehensible language input? And at that moment, uh, I thought I need to find a book. I need to find a book. And then coming back to the literature, the action part, if I just uh, can read this part, 
uh, I mean, I'm just trying to show the connection between literature uh, and the learning and teaching grammar. Literature adds to reality. It doesn't simply describe it. It enriches the necessary competencies that the daily life requires, requires and provides. And in this respect, it irrigates the deserts that our lives have already become. So in this case, the grammar was a desert uh, in, at, at Kafka University that I have observed. And, just, and, and, and I thought that the literature would enrich my students' language competencies, okay? So, and I just picked that book, The Lonely Londoners, as you can see in here. So what makes this book is unique is the style of the language used in it. So it uses a vernacular style. So that means it tells about the story of the Caribbean immigrant to the United Kingdom who were using language not really properly. And it exactly reflects their use of language. So at this point, there are lots of problems in the language. And the author, Sam Selvan, just consciously manipulates the grammar to convey the authenticity, the problems of these immigrants. So uh, now this is the book. Uh, now we will do some practice and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you some practice. But before this, I would like to share why I have chosen this book. So uh, this method of reading, uh, studying grammar with literature enables students to observe the language in a context without spending extra energy for learning. It also contributes to assessing students' knowledge from a broader perspective. It makes grammar class a fun rather than to be scared or uh, to be escaped from. Here, that you're gonna see soon, the point is not to force students to find the correct answer, but instead to show how flexible a language is, like it was in the case of the cultural examples. And in this way, we enable them to discover diverse options and control their own learning and to choose among different learning strategies depending uh, on their own uh, learning capacity. So here we, here we go, we challenge the, the holy book and the traditional understanding of language learning. One students, and I have also realized, one students uh, have focused on the literature, they gave up focusing on each other. I mean like their pronunciation, their grammar, so they gave up focusing on one another. Also, uh, while doing this method that we are gonna see soon, I encourage my students uh, calling them language scientists. Uh, who are in a language laboratory to analyze the language, to examine the language. And uh, the reason, uh, as a conclusion, why I have embarked on a, a philosophy of the literature to teach a language was that we shouldn't holify the language. Rather, we have to simplify it. We have to make it meaningful for our students. Okay, now this is the Lonely Londoners. Okay, so... We're going to observe the language. Uh, can you read it if I can just check? So, Nigel Chan, would you? So, I mean, uh, is it readable? Yes, Dr. Kujan. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the confirmation, Ojan. So, now let's read it together. So uh, I'm just telling my students, okay, please read 10 pages for the next week. And they read, and then I tell my students uh, when they come into the classroom, I just share the screen, you know, and I tell them we're gonna focus on the grammar, we're gonna be focusing on the reading and we will talk in English, only in English. And then uh, I just ask them to work in pairs, first thing first, then we focus on my readings in a mutual way. For example, feeling of nostalgia hit him and he was surprised. So you, you feel that there is something wrong here. He was surprised. And most of the time students find it, he was surprised. It had some fellers who in Britain long, okay? So it has some fellers who have been or who were in Britain long. And he asked the question. So. How about having were or uh, have been? So what is the difference between the two? You know, we're looking at the grammar from a holistic approach. So that's not the only grammar you're gonna be seeing soon. 
yet they can't get away from the habit of playing Waterloo. So sometimes we have some culturally coded words. The Waterloo station is a station uh, that people happen to make their way when they land into the United Kingdom. So it is part of the culture. Whenever a boat train coming in with passengers from the West Indies, they like to see the familiar faces. They like to watch their countrymen coming off the train. And I just tell my students, come off the train. So this is a good phrase. You come off the train. Okay. So they just take a note of it. And then if you're going to look at this one again, perhaps he was thinking it's time to go back. Sometimes they find it directly. If they can't find it, I tell my students, do you see anything wrong in here? And they say, he was thinking it was time to go back to the tropics. Okay. So, uh, then again, when a Jamaican friend name told me come up, so you see something wrong in here as well, who is named or named or called came up. Okay, so that was a kind of grammar. If we're gonna just switch into the second slide, if I can. Okay, so, okay. So we can't get no place. So there is two negatives in here. So a problematic thing that, you know, it has to be amended, they amend it. So they just analyze the text. We only getting the worst jobs, it have. So, you know, in Turkish context, I mean, most of the teach, most of the lectures maybe are from uh, English language teaching department, I mean, EFL class. So our students have great problems in subject verb agreement or tense agreement. So that, uh, novel is amazing for uh, tense agreement and subject verb agreement that you can observe. And then we come downwards and the students are bored. They don't want to study grammar, but we read, we speak English anyway. And then there comes a word, which is really key to understanding the cultural context of the United Kingdom, the color bar, you know. So we have the post-colonial literature and I tell my students it has been an ongoing problem in the United Kingdom, the color bar, the black people were discriminated. So they weren't given the same rights as the white people were given. So we talk about this one. So see, you see what we are doing, we are just speaking, we're just having a conversation in a grammar classroom, which I find to be really useful. Okay. So uh, I'm trying to be quicker as much as possible. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so again, auxiliary missing here. Why are you so prejudiced? Some of the students find uh, some parts, so they just explain it. So some of them are not aware of what the others have found. So, you know, there is a mutual learning in a classroom atmosphere and it's stress-free. We just observe it. And then again, a phrase. I mind him, so mind somebody, you know, I tell them this is a good phrase, you can use it, I mind you as students, so I'm just exemplifying it. Okay, uh, going on. Okay, sorry. Okay. Okay, this was a good example, but I can't see it because of the thing. Okay. Okay. It basically says, I think you best had see a doctor. So that is the manipulated grammar. And I ask my students, what could it be? Maybe we spend some 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, to sort this out. There is something wrong. We spot it. I think you best had see a doctor. And it means uh, it is exactly you had better see a doctor. And I ask my students, what is the equivalent of had better? And they say should. So we say, how about using should in another context? And we give some examples. So this is not the actual classroom. I'm just rushing a little bit. Okay. And the next morning, Moses gets up about half past nine and washes face, scrubs feet, and comes hair. And still, Galahad was sleeping with a smile on his face. And I asked my students, so when they sorted out the subject verb agreement, and I say to them, how about... How about the tense in here? So this one is present tense and the, the next one is past tense. So how could it be? They say we have to amend this one as well to provide the uh, continuity between the two sentences. Okay, so sometimes you have nice phrases like all right, what does all right mean? It means confirmation. 
uh, don't overplay it. So that means do not worn it out. Okay. So take it easy. Take it easy. So there's another phrase that we use in British context. Take it easy. Okay. So that's it. We're doing it in this way. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yep. So another culturally uh, coded thing in here, an incident, Galahad, the protagonist, when he sees a policeman, is quite panicked. So that happens to you in the United Kingdom as well. When you see a policeman, so you think that what is going on? Why he approached to me? So I'm just uh, transferring them the culture. And then when we look at this one, we see one another and I ask my students, what is the difference between one another and each other? Tell me and they tell it. So, and I say then one thing is you must done. So I'm just suggesting they think something is missing here, must have done. They just correct it. Some of them do it. Some of them see it. So they learn in a mutual way. Okay. So again, okay. So again, some subject and culturally specific words like insurance card. And I tell them you need to have an insurance card in the United Kingdom to be able to work. And I explain them welfare state. What does it mean? Okay. So uh, sometimes again, phrases like a fish out of water. Uh, so, so and so forth. I'm just not repeating, but I'm just trying to show the different perspectives. Okay, uh, then, yep, the last bit. Okay, uh, so there's a kind of tradition in the United Kingdom. You have to be good at queen, you know, you have to be in the order. But I, I can just uh, narrate uh, an experience I just, it just happened to me, and I can just switch into Turkish. Bir gün arkadaşlar İngiltere'de bir kuyruk var. 10 ya da 15 kişilik. Ben de çok hızlı bir şey sormam lazım. Hemen kontuardaki görevliye. Hemen kuyruğun önünden atladım. İyi bir Türk gibi. Hemen atladım. Özür dilerim. Tuvalet ne tarafta dedi. Soru bu. I'm just serving another customer. Sorry dedi. Ondan sonra ben 15 kişiyi bekledim. Ve söylediği cevap şuydu arkadaşlar. On the right corner. So, bu kadar. Şimdi burada da bu vardı. Öğrencilere bunu anlatıyoruz. Buradaki kültürü veriyoruz. Mesela diyoruz ki sıra beklemek İngiliz kültürünün çok önemli bir parçasıdır. Burada sırayı bozduğu için adring durumuna düşüyor. Öteki durumuna düşüyor. Zaten bir siyahiydi. Bu şekilde dersi renklendiriyoruz. Siyah katıyoruz, beyaz katıyoruz. Daha farklı bir eğlenceli bir ders oluyor. Devam edelim. Bu şekilde bunu bitirebiliriz. Uygulama buydu. Okay. Uh, another thing that sometimes literature makes it a great fun. So these men who just who just are from Jamaica, they just uh, they are just trying to show off. Uh, they are just trying to show off people that uh, they are really uh, they are really good in they are really rich in that country, in terms of uh, in terms of like uh, showing off themselves. Burada da arkadaşlar hava atıyor tam o sırada. Ben şurada çalışıyorum, ben burada çalışıyorum, çok önemli bir adamım derken siyahi biri. One time a feller was trying to impress some girls in a cafe, talking all kinds of big talk and saying how he has a big work in the government service. Same time he put his hand in his pocket to take out something and the unemployment card drop out. Burada da sınıfta hep birlikte bunun üzerine gülüyoruz. Hava atmak, tam hava atacakken oradaki bayanlara kendini olduğundan farklı göstermeye çalışırken birden cebinden işsizlik kartı yere düşüyor. Bu şekilde de klası daha eğlenceli bir hale getirmeye çalışıyoruz arkadaşlar. Şimdi uh, if I'm if we have time, enough time, I just would like to share uh, some of the feedback from my students. And I asked them it was a couple of days ago, could you please share your uh, opinions of the the the method that we applied in teaching in learning grammar? In applying, in engaging with grammar. Bunlara sordum arkadaşlar. Üç soru sordum. Ee, e, objektif bir şekilde görüşlerini aktarmalarını istedim. Sizce bu kitabı işledik bir dönem. Sizce acaba bu kitap nasıldı? Etkili miydi? Ee, bu şekilde üç soru. The London Londoners yani metin üzerinden gramer öğrenmek gramerinizi ne yönde etkiledi? Şu an gramerinizi nasıl geliştiriyorsunuz? Ve diğer eklemek istedikleriniz. Arkadaşlar vereceğiniz cevaplar bilimsel bir sunum için önem arz etmekte. 
Lütfen objektif bir şekilde cevaplarınızı bugün bana ulaştırınız. İlginiz ve yardımınız için teşekkürler. Bu şekilde öğrencilerime sordum. E, hocalarım, değerli öğrencilerim. Öğrencilerden gelen dönütleri sizlerle paylaşayım müsaadenizle. Hocam merhabalar. Sanırım The Lonely London's kitabı hakkında bilimsel bir araştırma yapıyorsunuz. Açıkçası benim söylemek istediğim şey bu eserin geçen yıl farklı gramer yapılarını görmeye çok yardımcı olduğudur. Bence kesinlikle gramer öğrenmek için etkili bir çözümde. Şu an dil bilgisi ne çok çalışmıyorum fakat takıldığım ve hala daha zorlandığım konular var. Bu konuları dil bilgisi kitabından çalışıyorum. Fakat The Lonely London's geçen yıl kesinlikle farklı ve geliştirici bir çalışmaydı. Evet burada bu arkadaşımız monotonluktan kurtulduğu için bu kitabı value yaptığını söylüyor. Bu güzel bir şey. En azından belki gramer kitabındaki kadar gramer yükleyemesek de öğrencilerimizin monotonluktan kurtulmaları adına bir adım atmış olduk. Diğer bir arkadaşımıza bakalım. The Lonely Londoners ile birlikte grameri metin üzerinden öğrenmek odaklanmayı ve dikkati geliştirdiği gibi bilginin kalıcılığını arttırdı. Ezber Ezber olarak öğrendiğimiz gramer bilgilerini önümüzde örnekten incelemek unutmama engel oldu ve kalıcılaştırdı. Şu an grameri geliştirmek için bölümümle ilgili makaleler okumaya çalışıyorum. Buna ek olarak haberleri ve basit kompozisyonları düzenli olarak okumaya aynı zamanda inceleyerek pekiştirmeye çalışıyorum. Aslında bu metottaki yani bunu aslında metot da diyemeyiz bir fikir diyelim bence daha doğru olur. Bu fikirdeki amaç şeydi, e, şuydu arkadaşlar gramer aslında her yerde. E, aynı Krashen'ın da önerdiği gibi bilinçli bir şekilde yani kan şiirisi olarak gramer yüklemesi şeklinde değil metinde bunu tahlil edin. Buydu. Amacımız buydu. Yani her yerde gramer var. Hele hele edebiyat öğrencilerine okumayı sevenlere gramer iline geliştirmeleri için muazzam bir fırsattır. Grammar in context. Yine şuna bakalım. Biraz Nihat Hatipoğlu gibi oluyor ama hocam iyi günler. Merhaba. Ben ikinci sınıf öğretiminden bula bula bula. Ben geçen sene gramer dersinizde kullandığım kitap hakkında yorumlarımı belirtmek istiyorum. Öncelikle başta kitap çok basit gelmişti ve bana bir şey katmayacağını düşünmüştüm. Çok basit hatalar var demiştim ama zamanla anladım ki sınavlarda veya herhangi gramer sorularında en basit şeyleri bile gözden kaçırıyormuşum. Bu kitap sayesinde dikkatim daha da arttı ve çok yönlü olarak gramer kurallarına, hatalarına bakmaya başladım. Puzzle parçaları gibi önce basit olanları yaparsak daha sonraki gramer hatalarını bulmak daha kolay olacak bizim için. Bu şekilde devam ediyor. Ee, bu da. Kısacası bu kitap sayesinde çok şey öğrendim. Basit deyip geçmemeye aslında her şeyin küçücük bir hatadan nerelere gelebileceğini anladım diyor. Şöyle bir iki yorum daha var. E, hepsini okumayacağım tabii ki. E, hocam öncelikle gönül rahatlığıyla şunu söyleyebilirim ki metin üzerinden cümleleri analiz ederek ilerleme yönteminin bana birçok açıdan faydası oldu ve olmaya devam ediyor. Bu yöntemle tanışmadan önce gramerin sadece test çözerek belirli kuralları ezberleyerek kısacası YDS formatında ilerleyerek gelişeceğini düşünen kişilerden biriydim. Ancak bu metodu sizinle beraber yapmaya başladıktan sonra aslında bildiğim birçok şeyin doğru olmadığını basma kalıp kuralların nasıl geçersiz olduğunu öğrendim. Örneğin hocam virgül det kullanımının tamamen yanlış olduğu öğretilmişti. Ancak farklı farklı metinler incelerken aslında böyle bir kullanım olabileceğini öğrendim. Bu metot tam olarak bir metne nasıl eleştiriler bakabileceğimi ve bir şeye kesin dememem gerektiğini öğretti. Sizin de söylediğiniz gibi Geleneksel gramer tekniğinin beni bir üst seviyeye götürmediğini fark ettim. Şu anda düzenli olarak metodu uyguluyorum ve bir süre sonra ise artık metindeki noktalama işaretleri dahil incelemeye başlıyorum. Başka bir açıdan hocam öğrenirken eğleniyorum. Bunlar olumlu yorumlardı. Yani olumsuz yazan olmadı istediğimde ama birkaç olumsuz vardı dersi anlatırken. Mesela öğrencilerden biri hocam ben bildiğimi de unutmaya başladım dedi. Bu çok ilginç bir tespitti. Çünkü hocam burada çok yanlışlar var beni yanlışa teşvik ediyor dedi. Böyle bir yorum da vardı. Yine bir tanesi, hocam ben paranoyak oldum, her okuduğumda yanlış aramaya başladım dedi. Aslında bu kitabın, bu yanlış arama işi sadece bu kitaba özel bir durumdu. Bu şekilde arkadaşlar bunları da paylaşmış olayım sizinle. Yani buradaki amacımız öğrenciye basma kalıptan kurtarmak, gramere daha geniş bir açıdan bakmak ve aynı zamanda gramer öğretirken derste konuşma yapmak, kelime öğretmek, gerekirse yazdırmak. Bunların hepsini bir bütüncül olarak e, dili ele almak. Hatta yani şunu söyleyebilirim. Speaking dersine de ben giriyorum burada. Uh, we were just uh, doing more speaking in grammar lesson than we do in speaking classes. So that is what I enjoyed. You know, I'm just, I was just challenging the traditional ideas of grammar teaching. So I was really happy because this is the power of literature. 
it transforms and it challenges. Okay. Yep. So we were talking about change, just a nice quotation that sums up what is change. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So that is exactly what I'm trying to do at my home university. We're not fighting with the existing reality because there is a reality. Our students need to do need to take some examinations. They have to good they have to have good scores. But you know, uh, by just showing them the idea, grammar learning and engaging with grammar is also possible with alternatives, with some other ways. Uh, I'm just promoting their uh, initial faculties. You know, I'm just helping them to think critically. I'm just uh, telling them do not learn in a linear way, but prefer nonlinearity. So this way, you just become successful. Okay. So. Uh, that is the end of the presentation. Uh, I won't go into this one. Uh, I won't bombard you with the grammar uh, because I'm against this one. Uh, so just the final thing, and some of my friends and students ask, okay, you have a suggestion, but what kind of uh, more broader suggestion, a broader suggestion you have uh, to solve the problem from tip to toe? I mean, the language problem in Turkey or the grammar problem in classes because it's quite conventional. We have been learning grammar or the language since fourth grade. We still cannot speak. We still cannot uh, do as much as it is expected. And my solution would sound a bit weird, but why not? So I suggest we have to have Ministry of Foreign Language Education for the languages to be represented, for language learning to be represented at the utmost level. And in this way, we can sort this problem out. Thank you very much for your listening attention and everything. Thank you. Let's go jump. Efendim hocam. Let's go jump. Thank you very much. I cannot, think, uh, I cannot thank you enough for this very, very more than wonderful presentation. Uh, so This is one of the issues for the last years. Thank you very much. But I feel I have to apologize to you for one thing I said at the very beginning. I said uh, Sanchukoja is not from the field. I mean, uh, from the field of English language teaching. He's from, in terms of his background, Sanchuk is from the uh, literature. But I apologize. So with, with this presentation, you proved and to be as expert, uh, as knowledgeable as any of us in, in the field. Thank you very much. You shared very valuable information. Also, you shared your own experience and also your own ideas and own practice, which you implemented in your course, and which I believe they are very, very, very val valuable. And also, you shared a very a good example of your teaching, which I believe most of us uh, should learn a lot. And if we want to do something about the communicative competence, and also you very beautifully shared a lesson how a grammatical lesson can be done uh, through literature. So, uh, so and also at the same time, you also challenge the traditional, the uh, conventional way of teaching the grammar. So, because a lot of people, including me, I mean, want to stay away from the grammar. So we feel it's a bit seen to teach grammar. So we don't like to teach grammar, but I think the problem is not with grammar. I think the problem is with how you do, how you go about it, how you teach, how you go uh, with it. So I believe in your presentation and, uh, will pro provide a lot of inspiration and, uh, for us we'll, uh, and it will be guidance for new friends and colleagues and uh, our students. Again, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for your uh, very valuable and contribution uh, to our understanding of grammar. So I uh, have been very much uh, inspired uh, by your uh, very lovely in, in the presentation and the informative uh, talk. So uh, I don't know 
whether we have so many question and uh, so uh, uh, uh, um, uh, so please just let me know if uh, there's any question to address. Okay, uh, just one. Uh, so I was just informed uh, by our team and uh, please and uh, click the link uh, to receive a certificate of participation. Uh, it takes just just a couple of seconds. Uh, this is the information I was asked to share with you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, we have just yes. one question from Emre Kaya. Uh, he's asking asking to Selçuk Hujam. I wonder if you ask the students to write again after teaching with this book and revealed any significant difference between this one and the traditional way. So uh, I'm not sure if I got the question correctly. So could you well, please? Okay, I'll repeat. I okay. wonder if you ask the students to write again after teaching with this book and revealed any significant difference between this one and the traditional one. Exactly, thank you. So that's really brilliant question. And uh, we, from time to time, we just read uh, some passages, academic passages uh, from Conversation Co. UK. So it's a, like a kind of includes clusters of uh, academic writings. So we read this one. And for example, one was about mosquitoes, you know, and I asked students at the end of the class, if you were a mosquito, what would you do? Okay. From time to time, I ask them to write something. And I see a significant development, not all of them, but most of them, they just pay attention to the things that we focus on. So uh, yes, the answer is yes. Okay. I just uh, make them write a couple of things as well. So it has been a year that we practice this strategy and I've seen development in their uh, grammar. Exactly. Especially as much as the book lets us to focus on and as much as I can direct guide them nicely. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Another question. He says that, can we use it on younger learners? It seems to me we, we just can we use it in prep classes at universities. Okay, so uh, not about prep class. I haven't used it myself, but it is just at the beginning of my presentation. And I just said, the literature itself in an, is an idea. It doesn't give you anything. So it gives you the idea. So that was pretty much an idea. Maybe some of the really talented teachers, they can find some other ways of engaging with grammar. I mean, of course, that's not the, that's for the uh, level of university students. Uh, that, was, that, was my, that was my solution. But this gives you an idea that you can teach grammar by using linguistics and language and literature. So it is an interdisciplinary perspective. Why not to focus on, for example, Cinderella, Kelolan, whatever, and then try to find something that might be valuable for your students. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we have two questions, Evan, from Ömer Hoca and Turgoy Hoca. They just raised their hands. Right. Yes. Hocam, please feel free to... Ömer Hocam? Oh, okay then. Thank you so much for the colorful and interesting presentation. And also my special thanks goes to organizing committee. Actually, my question is, you know, I mean, as it is in literature, for example, the authorship of William Shakespeare has been debated for ages. So in Turkey, the problem is that, you know, from time to time, even though I am a man of letters or literature, the problem is that why can't we teach and learn English? So many experts claim that what is, I mean, too much grammar teaching, but it doesn't work. For example, once, I mean, back to 2015, my school at Suleyman Dermel University School of Foreign Languages was under the process of accreditation, right? So the experts from United Kingdom, so, I mean, they pose a simple criticism. I mean, they harshly criticize the way the grammar courses are taught in prep classes separately. So their advice was grammar must be taught in context as you are already doing now. So my question is that, I mean, to what extent or is it sustainable then first? Or another question is that to what extent, I mean, the way of let's say any method or 
or technique, whatever you call it. I mean, that method, to what extent will it be able to eliminate the students' worries? I mean, for getting higher grades from YDS or YOKTIL, or to what extent that model will contribute, I mean, to get a satisfactory grade from those courses? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marujan. Thanks for this brilliant ideas and the brilliant questions as well. So I can say, yes, it is sustainable as long as the national curriculum could be designed in this way. That is why I suggest that Bence, yani bunu Türkçe söylemek istiyorum. Buradan tarihe bir not düşelim. Sonuçta şey değil. Bakanlık düzeyinde İngilizce ya da dil öğrenimi ne zaman temsil edilirse o zaman bunların sustainable yapılması daha mümkün olacak. Yani ben bir dil öğrenim ve öğretim bakanlığının kurulmasından yanayım. Kesinlikle. Biz akademisyenler olarak sadece öğretmekte değil aynı zamanda fikirler ve vizyonlar vermekte de sorumluyuz. Buradan da bunu söylemiş olayım. So it all depends on the Uh, the potential of the lecturers, uh, if it is sustainable or not, but if it becomes a national concern, I mean, a national concern, milli seferberlik or so, then we can sustain this methodology. And uh, the second question, uh, that it really helps students uh, to lower their anxieties in terms of learning grammar, But I still agree with you. So the national curriculum is depend on multiple choices. So they have to be successful in examinations. But as for my students, even 10, to, even 10 or 15 of them, uh, if I can give them, you know, if I can start initiate something with 10, even one students. In Turkish, we have a saying, bir nal, bir atı, bir at, bir komutanı, bir komutan, bir orduyu. Then I think we can trigger this motivation. All depends on Uh, how much students, how many students that you can initiate uh, getting this methodology. And as far as I can see, uh, some of my students, they enjoy this one. So they will practice it because I myself practice what I have seen from Turgay Hoca or Genger Hoca or you or so and so forth. So that is the thing at the end of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. My şey, bir dakika, şunu paylaşabilir miyim dostlar buradayken lütfen? <laughs> Değerli genç arkadaşlar, bu ben eğitimci değilim, haddime değil. Hasper kader İngiliz dil edebiyatıyla uğraşan bir akademisyenim. Bir gözlemim şu, inanın bu dil mesela klasik SVO değil mi İngilizce'de? SVO yani özne, fiil nesne. Türkçe'de SOV değil mi? Özne, nesne ve fiil. Arkadaşlar bu öyle bir devrim ki inanın 180 derece. Bu basit bir şey değil. İnanın bizim gençlerin Şahsım dahi ben bunu yaşayarak, yurt dışında geçti ömrümün çoğu, yaşayarak gördüm. Bak şimdi mesela ben diyelim Türkçe öğrenen biriyim. Tamam mı? Şimdi sen konuşuyorsun benim. Diyorsun geçen hafta şöyle, şöyle, şöyle, şöyle. Bekliyorum ben. Fiili bekliyorum şimdi. <gülüyor> Fiillerde yaptım diyor. Halbuki bu Anglo-Saksonlar ya da bu ne diyor? Anglo-Amerikanlar. Kardeşim ilk önce yüzde elli diyor ki yaptım diyor. Ben zaten cümlenin yüzde elli anlamını aldım. Ana fiil bana Cümlenin yüzde ellisini verir zaten. Ondan sonra rahatlıyorum. Şimdi biz Türkçe öyle bekliyor şimdi bak. Sıfat şeyli nesneleri diziyor, diziyor, diziyor. Fiili bekliyoruz şimdi. Diyor ki uyudum. Aa cümle kaçtı. Bu basit değil. Özellikle bir kişinin İngilizce bilip bilmediğini Türkçe metni İngilizceye ne kadar hızlı ve güzel çeviriyorsa biliyordur. O yüzden bizim dünyada şunu görmüşsünüz. Ben Amerika doktoralıyım. Arkadaşlar dil bilgisinde biz çok iyiyiz. Çinliler de öyle, Japonlar da öyle. O yazmada harikalar ancak konuşmaya gelince ben bunu çok büyük ihtimal dilin yapısına bağlıyorum. SOV basit değil bu. Teşekkür ediyorum. Kusura bakmayın. Teşekkür ederim hocam. Estağfurullah. Çok güzel. Ha bu da bilimsel değil sadece tecrübeye binaen. Haddimi bilirim ben. İyertici değilim. Sakın ha yanlış anlaşılmasın. Estağfurullah. Sadece deneyimde ben bu çıkarım edindiğimi düşünüyorum ve hep böyle işliyor yani. Teşekkürler. Teşekkürler hocam. Saygılar. Sağ olun. Yes, sir. Yes, Naci Hoca. You want to... Buyur. Okay. Yani hemen, hemen şey e, e, Serhat, e, Ömer Hocam'a teşekkür ediyorum. Çok güzel e, katkılar için. Ama ben bir şey hemen güzel ne değil de e, dediği şeyi tekrarlayayım. Selçuk Hocam burada bir metottan bahsetmedi. Hatta metot kelimesini bile ısrarlı bir şekilde çok 
ciddi bir şekilde kaçındı o kelime. Evet. Evet. Burada Selçuk Hocam'ın önerdiği şey bir approach'tan bahsediyor. Bir genel yaklaşımdan, bir holistik yaklaşımdan bahsediyor. Yani teaching language in the context. Bu bir e, şu anda hocam bahsettiği gibi kendisi de bahsetti zaten. Aslında o sözlüklerini açıyorum. Bu kitap olur. Bazen bir video filmi olur. Bazen sinema olur. Bazen YouTube kanalı olur. Bazen bir karikatür olur. Bazen bir resim olur. Bazen bir sign post olur. Bazen bir e-mail mesajı olur. Kendisini paylaştığı gibi. Burada dilin e, kendi konteksti içinde ve biraz daha belki bu anlamda otentik e, oluşu içinde e, öğretilmesi. Bu bir yaklaşım. Yani bu bir aslında Mustafa Zülkif Hocam'ın bir bak- Sadece hocam sesinizi alamıyoruz. Ama onda ettim. Yani grameri öğrendik Selçuk hocam. Ee, dile karşı. Evet, arkadaşım biri Doğan Bey sürekli mesaj atıyor ama e, ben de e, şey gitti diyor ama kendi şey gitti karşı e, valansı gitti. Dile karşı öğrencinin bakışında e, Selçuk hocam değil mi? Müthiş çok, böyle çok bir edebiyat edebiyat budur. Size edebiyat bir şey vermez. Rahatlama müthiş bir görüyor. Harekete, doğru mu hocam? Harekete diyor? geçirir. Yani action almanız için harekete geçirir. Yani haklısınız. Evet hocam. Çünkü biz o kadar böyle kurallı, o kadar böyle monoton, o kadar böyle rutin düşünüyoruz ve düşündürüyoruz ki öğrenme tekniklerimizde. Öğrenci hep şablonlar alıyor, standartlar alıyor. O sebeple değil. Şu anda bir Türkçe konuşurken bile birçok tekrarlı hatalar yapıyoruz. Efendim rutinlerin dışına... Evet, Naci Hocam bağlantıda problem var galiba. ...çıkıyoruz. En azından olan efektifle sahip olamıyor. Bu verdiğiniz örnekle ben çok güzel bir şekilde öğrenci artık ağırlıklarını hani şeyin dediği gibi Cem Yılmaz'ın ağırlıklarını atacak artık tamam mı? Yani artık suyun üstüne varacak. Bu anlamda değil, bu metot değil, teknik de değil ama çok ondan daha önemli bu yaklaşım. Evet. Son Na, derece e, kıymetli, son derece önemli. Hocam müsaade ederseniz ben söz alabilirim bilmiyorum hocam. Ee, hocam müsaadeniz olursa Talip'in sorusunu alalım mı? Evet Talip buyur. Uh, yeah, I can I can try to yeah. It, share it in in english as uh, i can uh, first start uh, with reading my question it is uh, suggested uh, by the lecturer uh, who, sh- who shared the seminar uh, that we can better learn the language with uh, with naji hoca's uh, expressing the definition as approach we, we can better learn the language with this approach with uh, the language and it, uh, its grammar in uh, in co- context in a better way So uh, in uh, my point, my pointing here is that, uh, for example, uh, in in the last uh, 20 days, uh, we can we can see uh, we can realize that in the last 20 20 years, we have more foreigners, uh, like more refugees, more uh, you know, international students in Turkey uh, with the Turkey bursları, and there are more more and more foreign investors and uh, more individuals are uh, living in Turkey now. For uh, we, uh, our lecturer, uh, teacher, uh, shared her, his uh, experiences, live experiences uh, abroad uh, uh, in the uh, United Kingdom. So uh, uh, my question is about uh, without going abroad. Well, what do you suggest to learn in the language lively in context without without going uh, going a foreign country? Uh, I mean, uh, like what projects projects can be developed? What uh, ideas? Do, would you like to suggest for the Turkish people uh, who, uh, who how they can deal with the expats in Turkey uh, for the for the benefit of uh, better learning language, better learning uh, uh, grammar uh, in context? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Talip. Uh, that was really a good question again. So the questions are all good today, as far as I can see. So that was the idea. Uh, 
because I just had first-hand experiences in the United Kingdom, I have seen how the literature, how the novels, how the plays, they have yeah, things exactly, exactly. in common in real life contexts, you know? So for example, I've given the example Queen, you know? So uh, so that was the same in the novel. So when you read a novel, when you read a work of literature, uh, I realized from the first hand that it is really reflecting the cultural context nicely. So that was my solution. It is a drop in the ocean, maybe not a drop, but you know, sometimes uh, some of my students really speak good English. And when I ask them, what is it? What is your recipe? They say, we watch series, we watch films. So it is the age of internet. It is the age of, you know, lots of things uh, before us. So uh, I don't see any obstacle in front of the individual to learn the language. So uh, the only thing is that that is my understanding. So we have to get rid of the excessive things on our burden. So, you know, just leave the students and I've seen they learn it really good. So do not limit their potential. And this is the literature. It gives you the imagination because, you know, I can only tell about my subject, my experience. Maybe some other people might have some nice views better than mine, of course. So the thing is, the people uh, who had a chance to go abroad uh, need to come together, uh, you know, to, to offer a solution, to create a project, a national project. Only in this way, we can just have the things going on at Kafka's in Katu, so on and so forth in an exchanging ways. So I'm, I'm not sure if it relates to your question, but that is how I think. Uh, my, my question was more about, uh, as I told, uh, this is the uh, live uh, environment and okay. uh, how, how we can integrate this potential in Turkey into, uh, into the benefit of uh, language in context. Like, yep, that is how can we integrate? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got your question. Uh, normally, people in Turkey, they think literature is something purely fiction. So that is problematic. This is the real life. This is the real setting. So uh, of my experiences, I tell my students that by looking at the literature, you can see the real life reflections. So if, you, if anybody sees literature as something fictitious, fictitious only, that is staying on the shelves, so they can't benefit from this book. So that is, that is, this is my knowledge and I cannot answer any enough things beyond this, Talib. Um, um, I can only say, uh, edebiyat size gerçek yaşamı zaten veriyor arkadaşlar. Yani uh, bu şekilde, uh, bu gerçek yaşamı verdiği için de ben okunmasını tavsiye ederim. Maybe some other people might find some solutions, but the only solution I can suggest is through literature. Thank you, Talip. Uh, Turgay Hocam, please. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I really enjoyed much from your presentation. Uh, uh, after, after listening to your presentation, uh, I, I, it reminds me several terms in our field, in fact. Uh, I appreciate your multiple perspective uh, to teach language grammar. And it reminds me, especially in learning, and also if we apply such a uh, perspective in our grammar classes, we can also teach for skills because students can take notes and read them a lot and uh, ask the teachers to correct them maybe. And also they can benefit from uh, learning a big culture because of the use of the literature, as you know. And uh, students can enjoy uh, such a class because especially non-proficient uh, learners commit similar simplifications in their production and produce local local errors such as double Martin and uh, especially in negation uh, uh, and the book lonely landers present a concise and compressed uh, form of sentences as far as I get uh, based on the language economy that leads us to the principle of shared context. Uh, and, uh, but here, uh, uh, your presentation reminds me an interview question and leads me to ask such a question. Uh, uh, however, some teachers, especially those who have some stereotypes, uh, may show reactions uh, as it uh, may cause learners' fossilization. Uh, reading such books may lead them to 
uh, not to uh, consider them in the writing maybe, and therefore some facilitation may happen in some uh, certain types of uh, teachers. Uh, and it seems to me that it's more applicable with adult learners, uh, but uh, what is the minimum teacher qualifications uh, to follow such a perspective in uh, teaching grammar? What yep. should be the minimum yep. teacher um, qualification? Um, because uh, as you have had many years in the United Kingdom, uh, yep, exactly. you can experience exactly. such usages, but our graduates uh, may not have such opportunities to learn language in a second language context. Yep. Uh, I don't think your idea is about that. So, yeah, thanks for your <laughs> comments, Hojam. And also, I think this relates to Talib's question as well. I mean, Ömer Hoca's question as well. How sustainable it is, so how could it be achieved? Okay, you just been to United Kingdom and you know the rules, so you might be successful enough, but how to, how to distribute this philosophy, let's say, to the rest of the country or to some other? So yeah, are the teacher qualifications enough for doing this? Yes. So uh, I was thinking to offer this as a project to BUP, you know, uh, and I just realized we might need some in-service and pre-service training. Otherwise, it would make it impossible. So my answer to your question, is because, you know, uh, uh, when you look at the United Kingdom context, literature is valued, highly valued. First thing first, it has to be valued in your country as well. So it has to make some sense. So that's why we need some in-service and pre-service training uh, so that we can uh, you know, develop teacher qualifications. Otherwise, it won't make any sense. So it is just a tiny idea at this moment, an idea. So if you want to make it a philosophy, an approach, a method, uh, in this way, you have to focus on this one in terms of teaching and learning. And today, I feel quite lucky that I just opened this idea before the diverse audience from students to distinguished professors at ELT. So I am unlearning as well. So it is unlearning hasn't yet finished. So still unlearning. Okay, thank you, Ojan. And I think Mahmoud Hashim, can I ask something after Turgay Oja, please? Uh, yeah, so uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for this uh, really nice uh, presentation. Uh, uh, your method of teaching grammar through literature is really, really, uh, is quite really nice because uh, I've been always against teaching grammar uh, as a mathematical formula, like subject plus object equals a sentence or something like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. But I'd like to address something. Uh, you said in order to solve uh, the lack of usage of uh, English in Turkey, you suggested a Ministry of Foreign Language, if I was not, uh, if I was not wrong. Yeah, that, right? was, that, was, that was to the point. Yep, thank you. But don't you think that the main issue here is that the people here in Tur Turkey are not that passionate about learning about other cultures and other languages? Because uh, even if you visit large cities here in Turkey, cities that are supposed to be filled with tur tourists, you see that Turks, we Turks, still uh, use uh, a Turkish instead of trying to communicate them uh, to communicate with them in their own language. So don't you think that's uh, the main issue here that we have like a bit closed uh, on our culture? Okay, thank you. Uh, so thank you for your question. So talking about uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Language Education, you know, uh, getting to know about culture is uh, requires uh, learning languages. So that is one thing. And I can just ask you the question, how many people had the opportunity to learn language other than English departments in Turkey? So, for example, I have been to Sividen and the tiny kids, they were even speaking English, part of national curriculum. And the thing I suggested would make learning a foreign language accessible for everybody. So that's the part of the literature. As long as it is accessible, it develops. When you look at the 18th century, 16th century, the age of Geoffrey Chaucer, when the uh, literature becomes accessible, it develops. So this is the same again. Literature is not that different from uh, teaching uh, or learning language. 
if you make it more accessible for people, people will learn it more and they will start asking questions in English or in any other language, you know? So that's the answer. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, Kujam, we have two other questions. Will you read or I can read if you want? Uh, I cannot see if you could read, Hojam. Okay, then. Uh, Özlem Erdem Çavdar asks, uh, I wonder how the assessment is done in that class. I prefer not to grade students. A performance and improvement are more important for me, but what if we need to grade them? Okay, would you like me to show the examination papers? If I can just, just a second. Uh, okay. Uh, if I can take some time, please. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. So good to go. I need that question will come. So uh, I was prepared a little bit. Okay. So do you see my screen at the moment? Yes, we're done. Okay. So this is my final examination for grammar. And the first question is, some black British writers manipulated standard English language to protest for immigration rights during the late 1950s United Kingdom. Correct grammar errors in the manipulated paragraph below. So this is 30 pounds, exactly the same. It is a passage, you know, we are students of literature. Uh, so it has, the question comes from literature as well. So that is what I find quite a uh, pleasure way, you know? So this is from the London landlords, exactly they do the same. And then the second question is again from literature, Doris Lessing, the fifth child. And I always appreciate the teaching of punctuations because when you don't know punctuations, you don't know how to use grammar. So the second question is again from literature and I ask my students to have uh, to put some punctuations in here. So this is grammar examination. And the third question is uh, like verb tense agreement. And the fourth comes comma supplies. Uh, so that's it. That is the final examination. And if we're gonna look at uh, maybe uh, the, the midterm examination, if I can find. Okay, so this is midterm examination. And the first question, do you see my screen by the way? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. so the first question is a bit like challenging to, to like a kind of protest for students. Grammar classes need to offer an atmosphere for learners to produce language skills rather than grammar formulations in the form of fill in the blank tasks. Using continuous aspect, critique the traditional grammar-based learning with no more than a paragraph. So I tell my students uh, to learn grammar, not as formulations, but as a kind of idea, you know? And I tell them to write something using a specific tense. Yep, that is the assessment that I did. I'm not sure if it answers the question. But that is how was it. Thank you, Hojam. Uh, another question is from Melissa Durmuş. I think this one uh, was uh, answered, but anyway. already answered. Yeah, I've seen this question. Okay. okay yeah. Then uh, we have another one from Gamze Şenol. Uh, she says that I'm an MA student in English literature, and I wonder your ideas about how to reflect literature while teaching in a secondary school. For example, we make readings from Shakespeare and write different ends to his plays sometimes. They like this a lot. Uh, yep, that is that is a brilliant idea. Even bringing the literature to the primary school is on its own is amazing. So uh, I'm not a teacher in primary school. I can only appreciate what has been done. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Hojam. As far as I see, we have no other questions. Okay, okay. Uh, let, let me remind you something. I mean, the audience and uh, Dr. Seltzer is, I mean, does not claim to be a grammarian or an expert in grammar. 
So he found the baby of called Gramo in his hands. So he shared his own ideas. He also shared how he went about the grammar. So he himself was very creative, was very original. And also he proved and, uh, to be very creative in the sense that he integrated the grammar or he integrated literature into, into grammar. He did not suggest a, a, a method. So what he suggested is a, is a kind of approach, which I find quite uh, useful and effective. And uh, Selçuk Hocam and, and Selçuk said something, Dr. Selçuk said something uh, which was very, very important. He said, instead of teaching language and uh, Selçuk said, engaging learners. I, I mean, so he, he was uh, totally against the idea of teaching language. So we have to move on to another dimension and leaving teaching language to engaging them in language, with language. This is, this, this is uh, very crucial. So he showed how students can be engaged in literature, which is one of the examples, which could be something else. So literature, he, as I understand, please correct me if I say something wrong. So literature is a means so it could be anything else. As long as the language is presented and as long as learners are engaged uh, in a very meaningful context, so it works. Exactly. Uh, so, and also we learn from the, the, the evidence and Sachi uh, Kojam uh, uh, shared with us. So the students like uh, the idea of using a manipulated text and very well, and they learn. And also, I believe they seem to have gained a kind of self confidence in the way they express themselves. This is, this is more important. So, they, I feel, again, from your remarks, your students uh, appear to have changed the way they look at the language. This is very, very, very fundamental. So, and this is a very big. Uh, let's say gain and also success. Hocam, uh, yeah, my, mine was like an invitation, if you could call it. It, was, it wasn't something like changing everything, but I'm not after changing because it's not that easy. It has been learned maybe over ages, the language here. But I say it is high time that we started uh, developing novel approaches, the way we approach the language. And this country has been spending thousands of pounds uh, to to to develop, like uh, to invest in academia. So why not to change the course of the events and then look at from another perspective? So another thing that I'm really privileged to be able to teach speaking in a grammar class. So that is another thing, uh, I mean. So I also ask my students, they resisted at the first time. They said, we don't want to do this method because it looks a bit like difficult for us. And I ask, for tomorrow, your task is to ask uh, your friends, your friends at another universities, what kind of strategies they follow in learning grammar. And all the answer, all the answer brought to me was in the tone of traditional teaching grammar. So I said, you are very lucky. At least you try something out. So trying things doesn't necessarily bring uh, results all the time, but you enjoy the idea of trying. So that is, that is the point I'm trying to make. So uh, you don't have to be, I mean, uh, listening to Queen maybe four years ago, she said, we don't need to change the things, but we can take some small steps towards the change. So this could be considered as a kind of a small step towards the change. So that's it. Exactly. So this is what you mean by unlearning, right? So we, we step outside our comfort zone where we feel comfortable. So we step outside our comfort, comfort zone. And also we, do you follow me? Okay, and also we question our practice and what we do, what we have been doing over the years. And if the problem is things have become routinized. So we've been doing the same thing without questioning whether or, or to what extent it or they work. So this is again, challenging ourselves and looking for new ways uh, to make it uh, meaningful. This is in what we learn at the end of the day that is called unlearning. That is, and uh, do not let old learning 
uh, impose certain way of learning uh, on your cognition. Uh, hocam çok, çok teşekkür ediyorum. Uh, teşekkür ederim hocam. Ne demek? Uh, ben very, very, uh, çok uh, ya uh, senin alan dışından dedik ama hocam sen alan dışına bayağı bir girmişsin. <gülüyor> tamam mı? <gülüyor> sen hocam. <gülüyor> Hocam edebiyat yani, bana sormuştunuz. Konu ne diye sormuştunuz. Hatırlıyor musunuz e, Whatsapp'ta minor'ın major'ın ne? Biz edebiyatçılar olarak bizim işimiz insan hocam. Konumuz da insan ve insanı ilgilendiren her şey. E, yani ben edebiyatın özellikle İngiltere'den döndükten sonra o transformative power'ına çok inanıyorum yani. Hani e, bu, bu gücü görüyorum. E, o anlamda edebiyat benim için raflarda duran ya da tozlanan ya da insanlara bak ben okuyorum diye gösterdiğim bir şey değil. Tamamen hayatıma ya da öğrencilerin hayatına dokunabilen bir araç. O anlamda eğer eğitimciysek edebiyatı kullanabiliriz. Dışarıda e, sokaktaysak muhabbet edeceksek yine edebiyat işimize yarar. Yani yaramadığı bir yer yok hocam. Ben ona inanıyorum. Selçuk hocam. Mutlaka Selçuk mutlaka ama Çok pardon hocam. Evet buyurun, buyurun hocam. Buyurun. Sena Selen soruyor. Özlem ses kilitli. Şu an geliyor mu hocam? Geliyor evet buyurun. Ee, çok pardon böldüm konuşmamı. Geliyor evet. Ee, hocam Sena Selen soruyor. Before using this book to teach grammar in context, how do you present the rules in the first place to students who are beginners? Okay. So... Uh... I would prefer, of course, some language books, uh, language teaching books, but I will never go into deeper. Uh, I mean, after coming back from United Kingdom, I didn't have a chance to teach grammar at a basic level. But if I were to teach uh, from that perspective, I wouldn't instill grammar like Krashen suggested, you know. So, uh, I mean, uh, I have a son. I think uh, he must be somewhere here. And I had a chance He's a young learner, by the way. I, I had a chance to observe the ways in which he learns the language. And I have observed that he doesn't look at the grammar at all, but he uses a perfect grammar. So we don't have to instill grammar on young learners. Or, I mean, uh, for the beginners, for the beginners, we can just, you know, uh, teach grammar at a basic level, but we can involve them, soak them into more into the context by the time goes. Because, you know, Uh, when you look at the passage, it is all made up of grammar rules. So you can start by showing them this is present tense. So this is continuous tense. Please transform the present tense into continuous one. So that is why we called it engaging with grammar. Uh, either it is the primary, either, uh, either it is the basic English or advanced English. Doesn't matter at all. Okay. Uh, Özlem. Uh... I don't want to close up this lovely conversation, but if uh, we have some more, if there are some people desperate for questions, we can get some, a few questions, I mean, and then uh, I, we need to close up the session. Yes? We have no other questions, uh, but I need to um, okay. underline the certificate of particip participation uh, to our uh, participants. If they want to get it, please feel it. Okay, we can end. Uh, okay, th uh, th uh, thank you very much. So let me remind and the uh, the announcement and uh, just as the may. So if you want to get a certificate of participation in attendance, so please click the link and the. And automatically, uh, uh, and a certificate will be sent uh, uh, to your email address. This is what I understand. Ojam, uh, Ojam, thank you very much. Uh, we really much enjoyed, and uh, we found your uh, talk the way you talk and very effective, very impressive. I found your presentation very impressive. And also, I thank the students of Karadeniz Technical University and the Kafkas University, Acetep, Rizal Recep Tayyip Ordan University, and Ardan University, or the Samsung and others, if I uh, just uh, fail to mention. And, and also, my colleagues and friends who uh, join us, who choose to stay with us while they could be sipping and drinking their tea and coffee, uh, if they're watching the television, by the way choose to uh, follow and to be with us. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, 
Hocam sana kucak dolusu ee, teşekkürler ediyorum. Tamam, sevgiler, Ağzına... saygılar Kars'tan. Ee, bizim gibi kariyerin evet. çok uzunda olan akademisyen adayı arkadaşlara şans verdiğiniz için çok teşekkür ederim. Ee, uzun yolumuz var. Estağfurullah. Ee, çok şey öğreniyoruz. Kars'taki öğrencilere de e, selam ediyoruz. E, böyle bir e, dolu, böyle bir verimli e, e, bir hocaya sahip oldukları için e, buradan diğer hocalarıma da e, isim isim e, atlama korkusuyla saymayacağım bütün hocalarımı da e, selamlar, e, saygılar e, ediyorum. E, hayırlı akşamlar diliyorum herkese. Çok teşekkürler hocam. Görüşmek üzere. Görüşmek üzere. Sağ olun, var olun.